Well, hello, Tipton Baptist. This is a Friday word of encouragement, but on a Monday. Since Friday, I was unable to get a Friday word posted. So let's consider this the Friday word that would have been last Friday. Uh, it's good to see all of you as I was able to run into some of you after church yesterday at the meal. It was a wonderful time of fellowship and a time of com community, the church gathering in a community setting. Uh, this is something that has been difficult, I know, in the past year because of all the events with virus happening and, and, and just everything else in people's lives keeping us from gathering in, in a larger group together. But how wonderful it was to be with you at, over the lunch period. I had a chance to talk with some of you I don't normally get to see uh, after a church service because of our typical busy lives. Uh, and, and I'm guilty to be busy, if not maybe busier than many of you. So being busy is a part of the thing we call life. And it is certainly something that we have to battle against becoming too busy. Um, that leads me to this Friday word of encouragement. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran minister uh, and in some ways a theologian uh, in the 20th century. He was living in the, born in the early 20s, living mainly the, the brunt of his life and the ministry work that he did. Uh, he's remembered for much of it from being in, involved and uh, a captor uh, during World War II in Nazi concentration camps. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he was in and out of, of uh, these circumstances. If you were to read about his life, he was in and out of these, these horrific circumstances uh, toward the end of World War II. Uh, the last time he ended up in prison was right near the end of the war. And as one biographer notes, just a few weeks before the Allies liberated the compound that Dietrich Bonhoeffer had been kept in, he was killed. Uh, on Monday, April 9th, 1945, after conducting worship the previous day, he had preached on Isaiah 53, 5, with Jesus' stripes, we would be healed. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was executed by hanging. This, this man spent a lot of, of his ministry time and a lot of the writing that he did about community came from a prison where his community had been, had been, had been, uh, crushed and he had been forced into these concentration camps and the only fellowship he had with people were, were people who were captors like him and he found the value of having a fellowship of people with him something that was immensely important and needed very necessary we gathered at church yesterday without fear and i think and praise god for that uh, there have been eras where christians would gather and it would be in a corner of a large cell room where men like Dietrich Bonhoeffer would gather and, and, and preach a message to people, maybe on their knees or, or, or sitting on their hunches, just listening to a, a minister bring some biblical truth. This man had done this countless times and, and he found such value in it. I wanted to draw our attention to Dietrich Bonhoeffer because of his value of being in a community or a fellowship of believers as we were yesterday. Not to take it for granted, Bonhoeffer would describe the uh, a fellowship of believers as a grace. He said in one of his writings, let the person who is able to experience fellowship with other Christians, let him thank God on his knees and declare, it is grace, nothing but grace, that we are allowed to live in community with, with Christian brethren. To treasure the gift of community is thus the beginning of true fellowship. I, as I said a minute ago, I'm as guilty as anybody as being too busy to be involved in community. But I'd like to try to make a concerted effort along with you, the body at Tipton Baptist, to see our fellowship as necessary and needed. Um, Psalm chapter 33, verse 1, we read these words from the psalmist. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren or brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. And certainly that's the case in a church setting here in the West, in the United States, and it is absolutely the case here at Tipton. How precious and how special it is that we can dwell to together, but to do it in unity. There's a lot of things that bring discord among brothers and sisters in Christ, but leading into a holiday period, of course it's a time that the world talks about putting aside differences. Um, while they might have a root of thinking that is not necessarily biblical, we will come with a biblical outset and mindset and heart set. Lay aside some differences and look at our brothers and sisters in this church and pray for them. Say, God, may you bless them with a desire for you. May you bless me with a desire for you. And might you bring us together in community with a singular desire that you are made known and, and your, your word is made known as great and powerful and believable because we believe it. 
Give us a desire for you that your name might be heralded as great, using our existence as the megaphone. We, coming together in a fellowship of believers with that in mind, we are doing the thing God has called us to accomplish in this world, which is to make much of Christ. I see this verse in in Psalms, uh, how pleasant and how precious it is to be in unity. I think of men like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who found fellowship with other Christians, something to be uh, coveted. And I look at my time with believers and I think, I, I want to do a better job at this. And as the pastor of this church, it is my desire to try to facilitate this and to support this. I really want to encourage you, whether uh, people have gathered together in, in smaller groups before or if that, this will be new for some of you, I want to encourage you to pray about at least being in communication uh, with a couple of other believers every week throughout the week here coming up in 2022. Let this last few weeks of 2021 be the launch pad for you to be in purposed fellowship with other Christians at this church to help us stay accountable in our reading of Scripture, our lifeline of faith growth, the Word of God, to be accountable for that, uh, to be accountable to pray for the things that really matter, the ministries of this church as there's been transitional with pastors, and here I am, yet another transition. Pray that this church begins to remember uh, who it is why it's here, where it's going, how we're going to get where God has for this church to go, that we pray to that end, uh, that, that we pray for discipleship, which is really, I think, one big point God has brought me here for, to pray to be discipled, to grow as a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ in the season He has set me in right now. As we get together in fellowship with the same ideas in mind that God has for us at this church, I don't think it'll be a hurtful thing. I think it'll be a helpful thing. And I think God would be honored by that. Let's take some time in fellowship this next few weeks. Let's be grateful for this grace of community that God has given us here. Let's capitalize on that and encourage one another in small little groups of fellowship through texting and emails and phone calls and even personal personal times where we actually still get together personally in little small group times. Let's fellowship this way to be strengthened in our faith and belief in Jesus, to strengthen one another, uh, to hear one another's daily stories of what's just going on in our lives. Let's let's use this next few weeks to prepare for next year to be a time of great growth in our fellowship. Uh, If Dietrich Bonhoeffer found this so valuable toward the end of his life, and his writing in this area is still making quite an impact around the world for churches who don't get to fellowship, then I think it's something for us to think about the fact that we are free to fellowship and we have nothing stopping us from doing this and and gathering together in different ways, in many different ways, uh, so that Christ's name can be made great in our lives and we keep each other accountable to keep Christ central and focal point. So might this be an encouragement? Psalm 133, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the idea of fellowship, what we had done yesterday at our fellowship meal, continuing to remain in times of fellowship together, purposing even to find times to be together. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing what God has for us in 2022. So I want to use this last two uh, month and a half of 2021 to prepare for that. And I want to be mindful of it and thoughtful and strategic about it. So be that way with me. Ask how God can help you uh, love the fellowship of the brothers and sisters you're with so that we have a desire to, to get together and to fellowship and to, to be in community with one another more and in ways that are meaningful and encouraging for our faith to grow. So Psalm 133 is where we were. Enjoy the psalm. It's just a few verses. You can read the whole thing in just a few seconds. So I encourage you to be in it. Um, There'll probably be another Friday word coming this week. Uh, Depending on how the video camera on my phone is working, you may see another one for this week coming up. Uh, I trust that'll be the case. In the meantime, stay in the word until I see you again. Enjoy. Bye-bye.